everybody, and welcome back to another Title Tuesday. I've started really to enjoy these sessions that we get to do each and every month with uh, Eric Downing from Hawker Title here in Indianapolis. So, Eric, thanks a lot for joining me, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, as always. Yeah, so um, so we're just going to continue. We've been doing a little bit of a series that we did throughout the month of February. We're going to continue it here in March and basically just go through the different parts of a purchase agreement and what it means from a wholesaler standpoint and what it means from a title standpoint, making sure kind of everybody's on the same, um, that we're able to tell the seller and the buyer and everything. Everybody's connected and everybody knows, has an understanding of what's going on with that. For today's episode, we're going to talk about closing costs. Um, a lot of wholesalers kind of think like, oh, it's really easy. All I have to do is put on my contract, like buyer pays closing costs. That way the seller doesn't have to worry about it. And I'm just going to pass that on to who's ever buying that property when I when I assign it to them and just, that's it. Just buyer pays closing costs and that's all everybody needs to know. But Eric, within that, when they say closing costs, there are actually a lot of things that kind of constitute closing costs. There's title fees, title policies, title insurance, like all that kind of stuff. So when people say closing costs, what all does that really entail? And can, is it okay for a wholesaler to basically just say buyer pays closing costs and that's just a blanket statement, statement that covers all of that stuff? Yeah, so I mean, it's a great question. We run into this a lot because anything that's involving money at the closing table is usually the more um, emotion. It kind of triggers more emotions again, uh, you know, for the buyer and the seller. And so we do see a lot of confusion. People think that because they wrote buyer pays all closing costs, that that's going to just immediately signal that there'll be no fees for the seller to pay. And that's not actually true. So um, a great topic, great great thing to go through and help you know wholesalers understand it better. So every purchase agreement's a little bit differently. The ones that we see a lot from wholesalers typically are one to two pages. Um, they're pretty good at outlining you know certain specifics about the deal. And we've talked about a lot of those specifics already. But as far as closing costs, there's usually two buckets of closing costs. There is the closing fee that is mentioned, and that is purely a closing fee. That is one fee that the title company is charging for the closing itself. Um, you know, so let's put into perspective, if there's 10 fees that a title company charges for various items, that's just one of those. So if you're, if you're writing anything about a closing fee, just remember, you're just talking about one item. You're not talking about all the, the items. The second bucket that usually attaches more of the fees to it is who's paying for title insurance. So whoever pays for the title insurance typically also pays for the large search and exam fee. So that's the of the higher amount that a title company will charge for because that's where the bulk of the work is done to provide that title insurance policy. So those two are always married. You almost always have a title insurance policy and a uh, search and exam that are, are grouped together under title insurance. Um, if they're really looking for you know, the buyer to pay all, usually un under further conditions, which I know is gonna be something we talk about in a later episode, but under further conditions, that's where they really wanna state Seller has no fees at closing, buyer assumes all. But keep in mind, you've still got tax prorations to consider. Is the buyer really going to assume that? You have potentially liens against the property. Is the buyer going to assume that? So you have to be a little bit more specific and say, you know, something along the lines of buyer pays all title fees, seller pays, you know, liens uh, or free and clear title or whatever you want to say to make sure that the seller is going to be on the hook for the items that maybe are attached to the property and aren't anything to do with the closing. And then the buyer's going to pay for all of the closing fees from the title company. So it's, it's a great, a great topic. Yeah. So that's where I like to kind of have that, you know, more of just like buyer pays closing costs, more of that just a blanket statement, like buyer's going to pay all, you know, all fees associated with closing, including the closing fees and the title insurance, stuff like that. That way they know also, oh, I'm not going to pay anything that's related, that's not related to closing that was like tacked on from before or anything like that. So, and I know on our next uh, little uh, Title Tuesday that we're going to record right after this actually is <laughs> the proration of taxes, which is always a huge topic that uh, kind of messes up a lot of stuff at closing and stuff like that. So, awesome. Yeah, so when you're talking about closing costs, make sure that you understand that it's really kind of two, probably into two different buckets. There could be a lot of things that fall into that, but really you're talking about the closing fees themselves but then also kind of the title policy, which is the search and exam and the kind of that insurance policy that comes behind that as well. So thanks a lot for this episode of Title Tuesday, and we'll see you guys next week with the next episode. Take care.